Hey everybody, welcome to your very first Photoshop tutorial with me. We're going to be walking through this really slowly today, so don't be frustrated as you go through. It's going to go relatively slowly, like I said. Each lesson will gradually build on each other and they'll get a little bit harder, but then they'll get easier again towards the end of the semester. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and open up Photoshop, so you should have already had a teacher-led lecture on how to open up Photoshop, so go ahead and do that now. Stop the video and do that now. Alright, so now that you have Photoshop open, we're going to start by opening up our file. Um, just bear with me because I want to make sure I'm going over my notes and I'm doing everything that I need to. First thing, when you come into this screen, remember you're going to be opening your file for the first time. So just a little bit about opening uh, a previously created file versus creating a new document. So you will see when you go to file, you do have the option to go to file new. If you do that, what it will do is create a blank document. So like flat white. We're not going to do this now. You will do this later in the semester, but for right now when we're working through our lessons, you're always going to go to open. So we're going to go to file open and you are you may or may not get a prompt if it asks you if you want to open to the cloud or not. Okay. Um, we are always going to be, when you're using these videos, when you're starting for the first time, when you open the file for the first time, is you're always going to go to file from the computer. You're going to open from the computer. Okay. After that, you're going to be opening from your cloud folder, okay? Because you have to start with my file first. So I want to show you something briefly on your file system. We're going to set up a system of folders for saving things before we even get started in this first video, okay? So you will notice here you've got your home screen, which is going to, when you click on that, it's going to show you the latest uh, files that you've been working on. So it's kind of like a quick way to access really quickly. It's going to tell you kind of like how long you worked on it or how long ago you worked on it. So you see I was practicing a little bit before I shot this video just seven minutes ago. So it's going to give you a little bit of a timeline. You can also change it up here from recent. You can Google for by name. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can go through these. Okay, so once you've started working through a video, you can just go straight to your most recent and it's probably going to be the first one that pops up there. Okay, we're going to create some folders in our in our cloud system. So you've got two different file saving systems here. You've got the one that's on the network here, which is the my computer one. And that's where you're going to go and you're going to open up all of my files. They're saved there. Okay, you're going to go to there, not my cloud. When you are saving all of your work, all of your lessons, all of your projects, all the stuff you do, you're going to put those in the Adobe Cloud. Okay? We need to set up a folder system because as you can see here, you're going to be working with so many different files, it's going to be easy to get lost. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to create like a folder system, okay? So that you can put those in there. All right? So to do that, you're going to click on where it says Cloud Documents over here to the left, and it's going to show you right now you can see I only have one folder set up we are going to create some folders in here. So we're going to create one that's called Photoshop Lessons. So we're going to click on this button over here to the right. And then you're going to title that Photoshop Lessons and click Save. Okay, so that you get one folder here. So you can see I have got a Photoshop Lessons and you can see I have one folder in there. I can also navigate back by clicking on that Cloud Document. Okay, so we've got under Cloud Documents, we've got one folder called Photoshop Lessons. Under, click on your cloud document again. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this one My Projects. And we're going to click Save. So now you see you've got two folders here in the cloud. You've got My Projects and Photoshop Lessons. And then we're going to do one more. We're going to call it My Photos. Okay, so here's why these three folders are really important. When you want to upload pictures into the cloud just to have them there that you can maybe use for later projects, that's where they need to go. When you're doing the lessons, these are the video lessons, they go in the Photoshop Lessons folder. And when you're working through independent projects, which you're going to do a minimum of six, they will go in here. And then any independent project that you do that's just for fun or on your own, you're also going to put them in there. Okay, so we've got our three folders set up. Stop the video if you haven't done that yet. Okay, so. We haven't opened anything in Photoshop yet. Let's go ahead and open up the file. So remember, when we're doing these lessons, you will open up my file first. So we're going to go to File, Open. And this is where this navigation comes into play. So remember, all of my files are here in the network, not in the cloud. So you're going to click on Courses. You're going to go to Art, Computer Graphic Lessons, Photoshop Lessons, we're going to be in lesson one, 
and we're going to open up one A end and one A start. We should have already had a video about how to open up multiple files. Remember, you're holding down that control key and you're going to click open. Stop the video and do that now. Okay, great. So we've got two files open. So as a review, remember, you can see your two files because they, when you open them, they stack them on top of each other. If you want to be able to see them side by side, you have to click and drag so that they are free floating panels. So this is our start file, this is our end file. It doesn't look like there's very much difference here. If you look, the start file is a little bit darker than the end file. We are going to make way more changes to this. Okay, we're going to have a little bit of fun here. So let's go ahead and close the end file because you won't need that end file. And I like to leave mine free floating. So right now, this is my file. You have opened up my file. I can make changes to it. I can do all sorts of cool things, but I can't save any of those changes because the moment I close this document right now, it's going to lose all of those edits. You need to save your own copy of this, and we're going to do it in the cloud. So all of your documents, like I said, are in the cloud. I know we're going slow. Bear with me. You got it. We got to work slow here in the beginning. So we're going to go to File, Save As, and this is the only time you will have to do this. So again, when you first open up My File, you have to save it. When you go to File, Save As, this document window is going to pop up, and it's going to ask you, do you want to save on your computer or on the cloud? You want to save to the cloud. It's up to you if you want to hit the Do Not Show Again or not. Um, I would recommend don't do it just, just in case you do want to save to the network. Hit hit save to cloud documents and it's going to ask you okay where do you want to save this thing is you should have some several folders so if i click on cloud documents remember you've got those three folders you've got my photos my projects and photo lessons where are you going to put it right you're going to put it in photoshop lessons and you're going to give it a file name so we want to call this we're just going to call it lesson 1a now, when you're saving a file, very, very important, do not put special characters like backslashes or colons or exclamation points or even a period, a dash. You don't want any of those special characters. I know you do in passwords, but not in file names because it will corrupt the file and Photoshop can't always be able to open it because it thinks you're doing uh, coding for computers. So don't put any of those just letters and numbers only. And then you're going to click Save. Now, the nice thing about this, just like in Google Documents, is this will autosave. Whenever I go to close this document now, any edits I make, it's going to save them. That's also sometimes a bad thing because the moment I close this, I can't go back tomorrow and undo any of my edits because it's, it's done. Those, those changes have been saved. So don't close your document unless you're 100% sure you're happy with the way the image is going. Okay? All right. Let me just double check my notes make sure we got everything. Good, I think we're good. All right, so we're ready to actually do something with this image. So you should have already had the tutorial on panels and your tools. Let's reset our essentials really fast so we make sure we put our room back in order before we get started. So as a little quick and, and a reminder, quick quiz, how do I reset the essentials? See if you can do that on your own. Did you get it? Okay, if not, here's how you do it. So you're gonna click up in the top right corner and you're gonna to go to reset essentials. Great, now we've got everything put back to the way it is. All right, so we're gonna start just by zooming in and out in the image. So remember your toolbox, it's a complex thing. There's lots of tools in there. There's lots of different ways to use tools. We're gonna start with the most basic, which is your zoom tool. So if you need to know what this keyboard shortcut is, it, if you hover, you'll see that it's Z. So I can hit the Z on my keyboard and it will select that zoom tool, or I can just click on it, okay? So the zoom tool is pretty self-explanatory. So if I click, I can zoom in. I can also click and drag and zoom in. If I drag to the right, it's going to zoom in. If I drag to the left, it's going to zoom out. So stop the video, try that now. Okay, once you're zoomed in, another way that you can zoom out, the long way is to grab up in the options bar at the top, grab the zoom out option. So you're going to click and then you can click and it will zoom out. All right, try that. Okay, go ahead and switch back in the options panel to the zoom in and zoom in a couple times. Keyboard shortcut is I can take my finger, I can hold down the Alt key, and I can click and zoom out. That's another way. So stop the video, try that now. 
All right, excellent. Zoom in a few times. I want to show you a few things. So you'll see once you've zoomed in on a document, you get scroll bars on the bottom and on the right hand side. So try that. You also can navigate around in a zoomed in image by grabbing what's called your hand tool. So in the tool box, it's this little icon here, keyboard shortcut is H. If you click on that and I click and drag with my mouse, notice I can click and drag and move around in that image. Okay, so stop the video, try the hand tool. Okay, one other way to navigate around in a zoomed image is to open up your navigator panel. So we're gonna go up to window up at the top and we're gonna open up the navigator panel. Now it's gonna pop up over here. I'm just gonna click and drag this out and make it a little bit bigger. Remember, this is just kind of a review. This is how the panels work. You can adjust them how you see fit. So you'll notice that there's a red border. That's where I'm zoomed in at. If I click and drag that red square, I can zoom around in my image. You'll also notice you have a slider. I can zoom in and out here. I could even type in my percentage. If I know I want to go back to 100%, which is zooming in 100% on that area, it will zoom in 100%. Okay, now how do you zoom out? Let's say, okay, I'm, I'm really, really zoomed in, and it's going to take a lot of clicking with that zoom tool to zoom me out. Is there a faster way to do it? Yes, there is. There's a couple of ways you can do it. So you're seeing, this is the most basic tool Photoshop has, and there's already a bazillion ways to use it. So that's why it's kind of confusing. But that's also why Photoshop is so great too, because it gives you lots of options. So how do I zoom out to full screen again? So I could go up to view up at the top, and I could either zoom in or zoom out, okay? So that's the manual way, or I could go to view fit on screen. Try that now. Okay, zoom in again. I'm gonna do lots of zooming in and out. Notice what I'm doing right now here. That was one other thing I forgot to tell you is I have a scroll on my mouse. So right now, see how it's moving the scroll, this little button here, and it's moving here. I'm scrolling on my mouse. The only problem is you can only go up and down. Just something to think about, okay? If I also may have noticed there is a keyboard shortcut. So fit on screen is control zero. So if I'm here and if I hit control zero, it zooms me all the way out. One last way, I'm gonna show you to zoom in. So zoom in one last time. The last way and my favorite way is you double click the hand tool in the toolbox. So if I double click here, click, click, zooms me out. That's the way I always do it. I find that to be the easiest way. Um, just because I like to keep my hand on my mouse. I don't like to switch back to my keyboard, okay? So if you haven't done all of those things, play with that zoom tool, try that now. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about are the selection options. Just to show you what selections are, this lesson's all about an overview. We're just getting familiar, okay? It's the first date with Photoshop, so to speak. We're just getting to know it. Nothing too serious, nothing too intimidating. Okay, so we're gonna talk about your selection tools. So your selection tools are in this top section here. It's how you confine your changes in a document. So you have to tell Photoshop what specific areas I'm making changes to. So if I'm gonna resize something or change the color of something, I have to tell Photoshop, I want it to be on this section here or on this section here. So we're gonna do that with our selection tools. And we're gonna work with the most basic ones first. And we will have a lesson all about selections later. We're just tipping our, our, dipping our toe in the water, so to speak. So let's go ahead and locate the marquee tool. So that's in your top left-hand corner. Remember, it's a drawer, so there's gonna be multiple tools in here. The rectangle tool is on top. We're gonna to click and drag, pull open that drawer, and I want you to grab the elliptical marquee tool. Okay, so what this does is this is going to click and drag and make a selection border. So if I try this and I click and drag, it's gonna make a selection board. So you, I call marching ants, so it kind of shows you where that border is. So stop the video and try that now. Okay, great. So let's say I clicked and dragged, because I want you to highlight just a circle anywhere in the document. You can be specific and do it just around the headlight or whatever you want, but we're making a circle selection. But let's say I don't like that circle selection. I wanna retry it. I don't like the shape, I don't like the size, I got it in the wrong spot. So there's a couple things you didn't do to move it. So if I keep my marquee tool selected, so it's, I still have, I'm still using this tool. If I use my arrow keys on my keyboard, I can move that selection around. So that's like, if I just need to nudge it a little bit, let's say I hate it altogether. It's just not right. I wanna start again. Well, there's a couple things you can do. 
you can keep the tool and just redraw it again and it will deselect the other area. The other thing is you can manually deselect this thing because if you don't want it, that area selected anymore, you have to deselect it. So I could go up to select and go to deselect or you can see the keyboard shortcut there is control D. So I'm just going to hit control D. Notice the marching ants go away. Okay, so just try that now. Try selecting and deselecting. Do that a few times. Get comfortable. I know this isn't the most exciting stuff, but that's what I want you to get comfortable with first. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a circle selection anywhere in your document. So you're going to see what I mean by it controls the changes. So we're going to make an image adjustment. We're going to change the colors of a circular area. So go ahead and make sure you have a selection. And then now we're going to go up to image adjustments. And we have a lesson all about adjustments later. Adjustments affect the color and the lights and darks. Okay, so it's all about your colors of your pixels. So we're going to go to image adjustments and we're going to go to invert. And notice what this does now is it inverts the color. So it's flops them. Blacks are going to go white. Reds are going to go green. Greens are going to go. So it's going to flip those things. All right. So go ahead and stop the video and try to invert your colors now. All right. Let's deselect that area because if I make any other changes, it's going to confine it to just that area. How do you do that? Right. You can go to select, deselect, or I'm going to do my control D. I've deselected it. Let's try one more. So go ahead and just make another circle somewhere. Doesn't matter where. We're going to do another image adjustment command just because we're just practicing here. We're going to go up to image adjustment, but this time let's go to, let's go to hue and saturation. Okay. We're just, we're just picking stuff. All right, so this is the dialog box that should pop up. So your hue controls the color, so you can see how it's confining it to just that area. I can make it more or less saturated. Saturate's just how intense and bright those colors are. I can make it darker or lighter. So go ahead, make a hue and saturation change. When you're happy, click OK. OK. Now that you've done that, I'm going to show you how to undo some stuff. So I'm going to deselect this. So let's say I I'm not ready to be done today, but I've just said I don't like those two circles. They're just weird. You can go back in time, and I'm going to show you the easiest way is your keyboard shortcut, which is Control Z. So if I hit Control Z, it's going to go back every little step. So I want you to go back until you have no circles. Try that now. Excellent. All right, we're going to do that again. I want you to make two circles, and I want you to make two changes to each of those circles. And I want them to be image adjustments. So you, can, if you want to, you can do the same ones we did. So you can do the invert and then hue and saturation. Or if you want to try playing with one of the other adjustments, you can do brightness and contrast or black and white or whatever, or even photo, photo filter. Today is about kind of playing around. So go ahead, find one, make some changes, have some fun. If you don't like it, how do you go back? Control Z. All right, so let me make my changes really fast. Okay, excellent. All right, so now I'm just going to show you another little trick, a couple more things, and then we're done with our video lesson already today. I want you to make one last circle somewhere else. It can overlap the other circles. or are going to be an entirely different area, but make sure it's a decent sized circle. All right, I'm going to show you how you can flip or inverse a selection. So let's say we want to confine. We really like this area. We don't want to make any changes. We actually want to make changes to everywhere except this circle. You can flip or inverse a selection. So now that I have a selected circle, I'm going to go up to select, Inverse, or you can see the keyboard shortcut is Shift Control I. But to be honest, I'm lazy. That's three keys. I'm just going to come up to the top, and I'm going to go to Inverse. If you look closely, you'll see you now have marching ants around the circle, and you actually have them around the outside, which means the area that is actually selected is this area, not this area. All right. Instead of going to Image Adjustments, this time we're going to apply a filter. Just I'm kind of giving you an overview, showing you what's out there. We're going to go up to the top, and we're going to go to Filter. And let's open up our filter gallery. When you do, this is going to pop up. You've got some options in here. Again, you're going to get around. You can play. You can apply whatever filter you want. But you'll see that you've got folders. And we have a lesson on filters later. But let's just go ahead and pick one from the artistic folder. So if you click on the different ones, it's going to show you. And you can zoom in and zoom out. So you can zoom in and zoom out. I want to fit on screen there and let me, that might confuse you. Let me try not to do that. Make my box a little bit smaller here. 
So notice you can view, zoom in and zoom out. So you can see what it would look like. Let's go back to my artistic. So it's going to show you in this dialog box what that would look like. You can even play around with the dials over here if you want to make it more or less. I'm a big poster. I love poster edges. It's like one of my favorite filters. It's kind of rad. And when you're happy, you're going to click OK. So again, remember, if you don't like this, just hit your Control Z, go back in time. All right? You're going to do that until you're happy. Let me just double check and make sure I'm getting through everything. Yep, that's it. Um, if you want to continue playing, you can. Just don't play so much that you completely destroy this image for me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to save this. The way you save it is you're literally just going to hit close. Remember, when you, when you close, because it's a cloud document, it auto saves. All right, so don't close an image unless you are 100% sure that you're happy with it. All right? I will show you later how to turn this document in by sharing it. But that's it, guys. We are all done for the day. If you have time left in the class period, I suggest just playing around in Photoshop. Good job.